needed a neighbor. Were you there? Were you there? When I needed a neighbor, were you there? And the creed and the color and the name won't matter. Were you there? When I needed a shelter, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a shelter, were you there? And the creed and the color and the name won't matter, were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there? Were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there? And the creed and the color and the name won't matter, were you there? This is Bushy, a suburban village 20 miles to the northwest of London. Two years ago, the Bushy Council of Churches started a community care scheme designed to complement the existing welfare services. I think it's the first organization that is uh, such a cohesive force. There have been many organizations such as Help Your Neighbor schemes, Fish schemes and so on. Uh, motivated in a Christian sense but this is the first cohesive scheme to bind all the voluntary and statutory organizations together throughout the area a telephone number is made well known through door-to-door -door leaflets newspaper advertisements and posters anyone needing help can call this number the number is that of the Bushy Council offices, which are always occupied, either by the office staff or by the caretaker. Bushy Council. Good morning, Bushy Council. Oh, um, I wanted care. Can you put me through? No, I have to give you another telephone number to ring. The telephonist has a list of duty officers on a daily rotor system. Hello, have your pencil handy? Yeah. The number for today is Watford. Watford. Three seven one two zero. Three seven one two zero. Okay. Thank you. Very and much. so the caller must now make a further phone call before he can contact the care organisation. It is a drawback to the scheme. It would be ideal to run the scheme on the lines of the say the Samaritans and so. Then why don't you? This is a, an attempt at a low budget help scheme um, to organize uh, an office continually staffed and all the rest of it would be an extremely difficult and costly operation what the what the hello is that care yes I wonder if you could help me there's a lady down the street who's not too well at the moment. Yes. Well, she's separated from her husband. Uh-huh. And there's no one to look after the kids. And we're out all day, you see. And I was wondering if you could help in some way. Yes. Now, can you give me her name, please? Uh, it's Mrs. Barnes Heath. 125 Farmway Bushy. Farmway. Um, Each duty officer what? is on duty for one period of 24 hours once a month. Oh, good. Do you know whether the doctor's been informed? No, I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, never mind. Now, we'll do our best to find someone and get them there today. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. I'll tell her. Goodbye. Nearly 200 people have volunteered to help with the scheme, and their names are indexed here under the six categories in which help is offered. These include home help, visiting, transport, gardening, accommodation, and supplying the needs of other voluntary organizations. Volunteers do not commit themselves to regular service. They simply say they are willing to be asked at times when help is needed. Mrs. Warren, care duty officer here. I wonder if you could help us this morning. We've got a rather urgent case. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, no, well, don't worry about that. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Finding a volunteer who can help is not always easy. But when a volunteer does accept a task, 
his or her card is marked accordingly so that the same people are not asked too often. Most of the volunteers are young married women who can fairly easily cope with an occasional task. 9504622. Mrs. Pantlin, care duty officer here. We have a case of a young woman who is sick and has two small children with no one to look after them. Do you think you could go down and help today? Yes, I think I can do that. Can you give me some details? Each category of help is under the supervision of a section leader who recruits volunteers and checks their suitability to work within the scheme. If the duty officer is uncertain about a particular request for help, she can turn to the appropriate section leader for advice. Yes, I know Farmway. It's not very far from here. Okay. Bye. We can reach that bit further than any statutory welfare organisation can. We find that uh, people will come to us with problems that uh, they wouldn't bother to go to a statutory organisation. Um, quite rightly so, perhaps a little more mundane problems, but nevertheless problems that worry them a great deal in their, in their life. Would it be fair to suggest to you that you're stopping gaps that are not being filled by the welfare organisations? We are attempting to fill the holes left by the uh, gap between the welfare organisations as far as they can reach and the statutory organisations and the need of the community and as such we hope we fill that gap. What's your name? Hello, Russell. Who's this? This your sister? What's your name? Hello, Debbie. Where's your mummy? Oops, shall I go and see her? Come on. Mrs. Barnes Heath has been helped by care on a number of occasions. What special value does she find in the help they offer? I think it's special value because you can get in touch with her in any emergency that you want without having to bother any friend or neighbour who obviously has got their own life to lead and they're out working and things like this and you know there's always somebody at care that will come in and help you you know any time. This is because in care there are voluntary workers? Yes well they want to do this work and uh, this is why they're there and you don't mind bothering them. Has your experience of the people from care made any difference to the way that you regard your own neighbours? Well, obviously their kindness and their understanding, it sort of rubs off onto you and you feel um, you have more understanding than to other people and you want to help. It sort of snowballs along. And have you done anything definite in this way to help somebody because of this? Well, I know quite a few people in my position and I go to see them because I know exactly how they feel and I know how I've benefited by somebody helping me. Um, I know a man who's on his own with no legs and uh, I probably would never have thought of him but being on my own I realise what it must be like for him to be on his own and particularly he can't get about and so I go to see him. About four years ago when your husband left you if you'd known about care or indeed if care had existed then do you think it would have been of help to you? Oh, it would have been a fantastic help. Uh, particularly I was five months pregnant a little boy 15 months old and I just didn't know whether I was coming or going I was very, very distressed you must have been and I was I, I just well it's marvelous to feel I'm you know that the children are growing up and things have got a lot better you get over these things in time but care you see there are people that voluntarily do this work and it's so nice if they'd been there in the early days and I'd known about it I could have got in touch with them without causing a lot of strain on my own family and, and friends. Because they've got their own lives to lead after all. So this is one area in which care is fulfilling a real but not always obvious need. But isn't a scheme of this nature wide open to abuse? Yes, we have had cases of misuse, um, mainly in the field of transport. 
uh, where, quite frankly, some people could have got to where they wanted to go under their own steam. Um, we have gently tried to persuade these people that perhaps next time when they call, it might be as best if they went under their own steam. Transport is the most heavily used section of the care scheme. Very well indeed. Better today. Yes. That's good. Now mind your head. Mind your head, then. Uh, thank you. A variety of ailments, lack of finance, or just plain frailty can all help to make elderly people prisoners in their own homes. Care helpers join with other voluntary organizations to provide regular transport for elderly and disabled people. For some of them, this will be the one highlight of the week. This organisation helps a lot of elderly people and a lot of middle-aged people. Is it a middle-aged organisation for middle-aged people? No, it does, I agree with the first part of your question, it does help a lot of elderly and middle-aged people. But it helps them from uh, a basis of youth to old age. We go right from through the strata with our helpers. Um, I recently went to a youth club who wished to commit themselves to helping care. Youth is, as we all know, quixotic, uh, but it can undertake gardening tasks and this kind of thing, done on a group basis. There are a lot of people trying to help people these days. What's so special about care that makes it different from organisations like uh, Rotary or Toc H? I think that one must one can't deny the amount of help that is if in that it binds all these these groups together these uh, statutory and welfare groups together so that we can liaise with them we can help them they can help us and therefore we find at least we try to be more effective in the area because of their being there and our being there so in addition to the effectiveness there's also an element of Christian commitment here. It is a church scheme. What makes it so different from these other organizations, would you say? This is a, a, a very difficult question to answer. Perhaps it can be best said in the degree of commitment of the personnel. Uh, they have, after all, a Christian motivation. It, it's a glib saying, yes. The thing is about a church organization. The church needs to outreach. It is primarily an ill church that doesn't reach out into the community around it. The same way that, that it can be done and the motivation is there in what we believe. Are you really suggesting that this is the church looking for a job and finding one in the community? I'm suggesting that this is a good way for the church to be in action. A few miles from Bushy is the town of Rickmansworth. Here the Council of Churches are looking into the possibility of starting a scheme similar to the Bushy one in their own town. We asked Paul Robinson, a Rickmansworth councillor, if he felt there really was a need for a care scheme in Rickmansworth. Yes, I do. One example of this is that when I am canvassing, uh, I find frequently people who do need help, who are lonely, who don't have urgent requirements, but who, if I could pass them on to an organisation like CARE, would certainly receive help. Another deeper example is that on the Housing Committee recently, we came up against the case of a woman whose husband was in prison. Now, when her husband dies, normally neighbours are sympathetic and will rally around. 
but this woman, because her husband went to prison for a rather uh, an unpleasant crime, uh, was left alone. She had small children, and she was almost at her wit's end and almost having a nervous breakdown. The council could only deal with the physical nature of the case and see that she was all right physically, but someone who could, over a period of years even, have called on her and given her help would be most valuable. If you were to take this scheme from Bushy to Rickmansworth, would you want to adapt it in any way? There is one small organisational adaptment which I should like to make, and that is with regard to the telephone number. I think it's rather clumsy that a, a person has to ring twice to find help, and one way which I, in which I think it could be adapted is something which the Rickmansworth Council of Churches are looking at at the moment, uh, in consultation with the GPO, in that one would have one fixed telephone number which could be routed around to different people's houses, so that the person who was on duty at that time could take all calls without a second call being necessary. We're talking about adapting the scheme to Rickmansworth, but supposing you wanted to transport the whole scheme to Glasgow or Manchester, would you see any real difficulty in that? No, I would see no difficulty at all. The practical uh, differences between what type of help might be needed could be different, but the fact remains that human beings are fallible and will go on making mistakes, and there will always be members of the community who need help, and that sort of help will not always be provided in in the general level of statutory social services and therefore the local churches should take the need, the Christian churches should take the need uh, in providing this help. The church, says Paul Robinson, must meet the needs of the community. But is this just to sidetrack the church away from its real job, that of preaching the gospel? Well, some people would say that it is. But unless the church demonstrates a real concern, deep and active, for people, as Jesus himself did, then the edge of the vitality of its message has gone. Wherever you travel, I'll be there, I'll be there. Wherever you travel, I'll be there. And the creed and the color and the name won't matter, I'll be there.